They'll be calling you a radical. Fukushima breaking news. I want to give you an update on my trip to New York, on what's going on over Fukushima. It's just report that day after day after day, and everybody's just number, uh, drawing on themselves, don't give a fuck. The, I mean, the whole, it's just pointing to the Pacific all day, every day, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to do anything. They're just going to roll the dice and take the fucking chances. I want to talk about my trip to New York. And everybody that showed up at Washington Square and our walk, sorry for making everybody walk so far. It turned out so great. I never packed so much activism into five days. I mean, what we were able to do there, the people I met up with in New York, Ackerman come down, people came from Jersey, came from Connecticut, came from Virginia, Albany. What a powerhouse. Wow, what a group that showed up. Incredible dynamic, intelligent people. Serious activism with great giant minds. Doers. Oh, it was so great. Including that we even had a little two-year-old there who was born post-Fukushima. It was so great. And I got so much hope, even though I did get my phone sold in front of the Barclay Center. I'm blaming Ackerman on that again, what, too. Talk... Uh, who, now tell me this, all you New, York, New Yorkers, who in their right mind would own a car in that city? I mean, why would anybody even bother? So Ackerman, yeah, he's got to drive me. Listen to GPS, turn left now. That's a one way. Turn left now, one way. I mean, I don't know how 9 million people a day aren't killed for those godforsaken things. But in Brooklyn, I walked around the corner on Sunday morning just going for my walk and church was in session this Young African American man comes out, he walks right up to me real calm, casual, and he says, Kevin Blanks, small world. So, over and over and over, I walked into the coffee shop the first day, and one of the people working there, a young man says, Kevin Blanche, anything you want's on me. I mean, that was over and over and over. I got on the subway yesterday. I was going over the top of the bridge. What a vista. Oh, what, how beautiful is that view? And beautiful, incredible beautiful girl. She yells at me across the subway. Kevin Blanche. She walks over there and she freaking jumps on me. She says, I want to have your baby. <laughs> Can I kiss you? And I'm like, yeah. She give me a big hug. And I said, don't you think I'm a little old for you? But... I can't believe how much how much people do appreciate me there, and it gave me a lot of hope. And I mean, the conversations it was so powerful. The the police with me all over Times Square, all over Forty Second Street. The activists that I ran into, I can't believe the cops were great with us. I mean, we did activism right in front of CBS's headquarters. Tom Blewett, Tom Ackerman, like, wow, what an activist, Tom, I, both of them, wow. I mean, amazing the work we got done. People were so supportive of us. Why now, 40 Street a young girl who said she came from South Carolina and is taking up women's right activism. I mean, these people get things done. I mean, over and over and over, as you've seen that, that's, that guy I'm standing there with at the Tiananmen Square. We, you know, we talked about that for two days. That's him. That's the guy. You know, that's one of the original at Tiananmen Square. I mean, so great. The underground media in New York is a powerhouse. New York Hacks, thanks for all the great photos. He was there so much. They showed up. Right as I was doing my talk at Washington Square, a lot of the underground media showed up. There was a lot of people there. You know, granted, they all didn't walk to us. You know, we had a group, what, probably about 20 30 of us that walked all the way, and I think they wanted to freaking clock me, Ackerman on my feet, you know, because it was a long walk, but, you know, we went down to Zuccotti, we went down there, and it was a powerful, powerful day. You know, I stood in front of with that sign, PU is bigger than GE. I mean, I got great reaction from people all over. People everywhere, you know, there's 53 million tourists in that city. Tourists after tourists, German tourists all over coming up to me, and, you know, even the you know, everybody is that I talk to, for the most part, they know about Fukushima. But they are totally confused, totally in the dark about Fukushima. They're like, yeah, we know it's not no good, but we don't know, you know. Why is it we don't hear anything about it, you know? That's a question they all offer, it, uh, you know, ask us over and over and over. I simply say, 
It's because the media is owned by the same people that own the plants over there, the General Electric Media. I ran into a guy yesterday, they were juggling in the park, I was in Bryant Park. By the way, the New York City Library, oh, wow, I don't know if anybody's been in there at Public Garden, 42nd Street. My God, it's like you're being able to do research in the Metropolitan. I mean, it's that nice. It's incredible. It's an incredible city. The public domain, what they're doing at Times Square, what a powerful, powerful place for activism. I got so much activism, I can't believe what I was able, we were able to get done in those few days. It's, it was a walk and we talked. We had attorneys there. We had media there. We, I mean, we had powerful doers. A lot of young, bright people. And we talked, and we talked, and we strategized, and we organized. You know, a lot of people know the Indian Point licensing ran out. People are somewhat aware of that in New York. They're somewhat. They are aware. And for the most part, that city's amazing as far as people's minds. You can have conversations with them, and we can make a difference, but people just are starving for information. They just don't know. And how could they possibly know? Where are they going to gather it? You know, unless they've stumbled on one of our YouTube sites, it's impossible for them to know. There's no print media out there. There's no media out there. But we're breaking that. We are. Some of the people I hooked up with, you know, you wouldn't believe some of the people I hooked up with. And we have a lot of things going underground. I mean, right now, right as I speak, there's a lot of powerful things that came out of this. This is happening. You know, people can deny it and say, Oh, you know, I got on the plane with this guy and he started the same old shit with me about, well, God, you know what he said to me? You know, and I told him what I was doing in New York, blah, 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 and he's like, well, how many people has it killed? And it hasn't killed anybody. And I says, really? You're going to fall for that bullshit, huh? Fuck, go watch Fox News and fucking more. I says, it's killed fucking well over half a million fucking people to the fucking date right now. Whoa, blah, blah, blah. You know, if I guess it's not right in your face and Fox News is telling people's heads. Cancer's spiking all over, fucking horrific stories, but the thing that I learned from this trip, people are listening to me. They're listening to us. We're, this is, this is, is so organic and it's so amazing. It, this is amazing. What is going on with this little group is so amazing because we're funded by no one. We don't have any money. And here's these groups that got millions of dollars. Here these artists are selling art for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And here we're getting zero from anybody. It's so upside down. It's so organic. It's so real. It's so counter to what's going on. And when people come up to me like that, I mean, people around here, they don't, they have no clue what my activism is when you would think we're the cancer, autism, copper of the world. It, 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 it just shows you what American culture is. Where you should be aware, you're not aware. Yet, I could walk the streets in Brooklyn and people come up to me. You know, and very concerned. There's a lot of great spirituality, righteousness that are people trying to wrap their minds around. You know, what I was doing, I got into the cage and we talked about that with the beet juice. You know, we worked on that for a long time. You know, I sit in there for a long time. You know, that was the second time I went in. A lot of people, they, they just look at you. You're like, you know, Grand Central, I'm doing activism in there. You know, Tom, Tom could tell you, CBS, ABC, NBC, we stand there, people walk up to us, and it's just like a drooling, dubbering stubber. Okay. What do you think about drinking the blood of Chinese? What, huh? Your your phone's made by slaves. What, huh? What? Uh, oh, I, I saw you in that cave. What, what are you crazies doing? Uh, uh, why they're on their cell phone? You know, these people from all over the world. People are totally fucking clueless. No morality. No fucking logic, no fucking nothing. It, it is fucking... It, go all the way back to the very beginning of thought. Who would believe that it could possibly come to this? People are totally out of fucking mind, out of respect, out of... They don't give a fuck. Yet they'll get cancer and fucking die. Ignorance. Oh, did I name this? As Thomas Acker says, you threw the blanket over the whole thing. I think it out. Oh, did I name it right, post-ignorance. Fukushima is ongoing. There's absolutely nothing fucking going on. Nobody's even trying. No, I think it's just fucking... I mean, it's beyond a fucking joke. 
It's some kind of epic fucking bizarro fucking whacked out fucking time in America that is beyond explanation. But there's a small group and we're going to change and we drew a line in history in New York and people look back, mark my words, people look back at that small group of activism years from now and they're going to say, look who that was and that was and that was and that was and so and so was there, that attorney was there, that freaking media was there, that person was there, he ended up being this, this person ended up writing this, this person ended up doing this, this person ended up doing this, mark my words, mark my words. It is exactly what I had hoped. I didn't know. I was very nervous about it. Did it turn out everything that I hoped? Then some. Then some. We've got that flame burning. We got the fire going in New York City. I plan to go back there very soon. and sit, We're going to set up shop with our activism right at Times Square is what we're going to organize. We're going to set up some serious activism right there with the media, with the people. We've got some people working on it right now. I really appreciate everybody that showed up and everybody that's done everything. The small few people that have sent me small sums of money and that have helped fund me on this thing. As we've done this on a shoestring, I, I so much appreciate all of you. But you know what? This is historical, and what we're doing is so important. And you know what? It is working. I, I saw it right in my face. It's working. Stay doing what you're doing. Stay focused. And I'll keep going. You're stuck with me. Stay on tune.